Hello everyone and welcome to the English Teacher's Guide to the IGC Cambridge exam, First Language English. And today what we'll do is we'll look at how to achieve perfect marks for the writing question, which is question one for the extended paper and the final question for the core paper. Now, briefly, the extended paper, the structure of the exam, which is 40% of the total grades, and that's of both paper one and paper two. Paper two is a two hour paper. You have two extracts to read, so it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to read those but obviously look at the questions first so you know exactly what you're looking for immediately. And there are three questions to answer for paper two. Each one will take about half an hour to complete. So the empathy response, which is this writing task. You'll be basically be asked to read one article. You'll then have to, uh, you'll be asked to write either a letter, a speech, or the words for an interview, etc. Looking at bullet points that they are asked you to focus on. Second question, which we'll do a video for as well, analyzing language. So you'll read one of the articles and explore the effect the language has using simple sort of PE paragraphs. But again, there will be a video to show you how to do that. And finally, another video is a summary question. So after reading both texts, you need to write down in the fewest words possible the details you've been asked to reword in the question. Okay? If you need to look at that again, please pause it so you can note anything down. Let's move on. So, a couple of tasks for you. So the writing task for paper two is worth 20 marks. So firstly, I want to ask you whether you know this. How do you achieve 15 marks for the reading part of this question? Secondly, how do you achieve the full five marks for writing? So although this is, it looks like a writing question, you're actually, uh, three quarters of the marks go for your ability to read. And then finally, how do you plan this response? Pause this very quickly, note down what you think the answers are, because if you don't know how to do this properly, you'll never get perfect marks. Okay, so 15 marks for reading. You can see I've got the exam, uh, exam board's mark scheme at the bottom here, but across the top, to basically get perfect marks for reading, you have to use plenty of correct detail from the text, making sure to put it into your own words. So you're not just copying and pasting uh, words from the actual text itself. You need to almost be like the character. So it's a little bit like creative writing. You need to sound as if you are the character from the actual text itself. Making sure to do that, you explore how those particular details from the text made you as the character think and feel. Don't make anything up. Everything has to come from the text because that's where the reading comes from. And then make sure you cover all aspects of the question in your response. So if there are bullet points, you make sure you cover those bullet points. Now the five marks for writing are simple. To get perfect marks for writing is the same way you get perfect marks for any piece of writing. This includes your Cambridge coursework. So you need to make sure you always plan your content for any piece, and we'll go through that in a moment, which is task three. Make sure your piece matches the purpose. Is it writing to inform, to entertain? You get the idea. Make sure the piece matches the genre. It has to look exactly like the piece you're asking to be written. But remember, you don't need to use columns or draw images or is it a leaflet, fold anything up or anything like that. Make sure you use a variety of sentence types. Make sure you use those different sentence types particular effects. Include a variety of sentence starters. Use a variety of complex punctuation. Again, you know, use certain types to uh, exemplify certain deliberate meaning. Exclamation marks will show some kind of sense of anger, possibly. Question mark will show a sense of confusion or uh, you know, deliberate requests for information. Make sure you consider the formalities, is formal or informal. Use different lengths of paragraphs. Spell all words com uh, correctly. Make sure the whole text structure works together. Make the piece interesting. Don't make it boring, please. And finally, what you need to make sure you do to get those five marks is show off your ability. This is the first time the examiner had ever seen a piece of writing from you. And that's the only evidence they have as to how good you are. So make sure on a day you show off, you jump through all those hoops. You're not just using simple words, simple pieces of punctuation. You exemplify to someone who's never met you before that you are excellent at writing. Same with football. If you simply trap a ball, no one's going to think you're any good at football. If you do lots of tricks and skills and kick-ups, etc., everyone's going to think you're great. Works the same for writing. But the third task was how to plan. So how do we plan? Well, obviously, with any question, no matter what the exam is, you read the question carefully, underlining key parts to make sure you know exactly what you're being asked to do. Normally, the bullet points work roughly in the order that they appear in the text. That's a quick tip for you. Think about the text. Think about how the text should look. Sorry. So if it's a letter, speech, diary, you might want to note down exactly how that should look, look like. 
And finally, note that anything you forget to do in order to achieve perfect marks. So you might want to also write down some key vocabulary that you're looking to use. So for me, for instance, I sometimes forget to use a, var a variety of sentence starters. But let's look at a question, shall we? So this is an example of question one from 2011 paper. Imagine that you are James. Write an entry in your journal intended to be read by members of your family when you get home. In your journal, you should explain how you feel in this environment, comment on your relationship with Redmond, express your thoughts about the next few days of this adventure. Base your journal on what you've read in passage A. Be careful to use your own words. Begin your journal entry, sometimes I wonder what I'm doing here. And right between the sides and two sides, and there at the bottom is how the marks are divided. Now you can see I've already underlined key parts of the question, so I know exactly what I need to do. And you'll notice that I've also colour-coded the bullet points. Now it's not a bad idea for you. If you have one of those pens that you can click onto different colours, then when we're trying to find the information for each bullet point, in the text, I can underline it with the colour I need. So that's all part of the planning process. Now let's look at the text, but as you can see, I've already started to underline the key information. So as we read, I'll, highlight, I'll stop and points and talk to you about some of the things that we can detect. So in this extract, Reverend O'Hallan describes a journey into the jungle by canoe. James, a poet, has been eventually persuaded to accompany Redmond. So, at midday, we climb into our dugout canoe and set off upriver towards the interior. After about 10 miles, the fields gave way to well-established secondary forest and then the primeval jungle began. So primeval suggests something ancient, something old. I could also use, don't forget, the blurb across the top to help me with some of my thoughts and things. I need to become this character, James. The river seemed to close in on us. The 60 meter high tree crowded down the slopes of the hills, almost to the water's edge and apparently endless chaos of different species of trees of every kind of green under the uniform glare of a tropical sun. Parasitic growths sprouted everywhere. Ferns fanned out from every angle in the branches. Creepers as thick as legs gripped each other and tangled down to the surface of the water, their tips twining down in the current like river weed. So straight away we get this impression that the jungle and the environment is somewhat inhospitable, dangerous, uh, looking to attack us potentially. It's, it's a personification here. You know, the trees and things gripping each other, that's what people do. So it's almost as if the forest is alive, it's attacking us. So as the carrots are, I'm going to be potentially worried about everything around me. The river itself began to twist and turn too. The banks behind us appearing to merge together into one vast impenetrable thicket. Impenetrable means you can't get through it. Shutting us in from behind as this feeling of being trapped. At the same time, the trees stepped aside a meagre pace or two to let the river swirl down ahead. The outboard motor set on a wooden frame at the stern of the canoe pushed us past foamy little tributaries, islets, shingle banks, strewn with huge round boulders, half-hidden coves scooped round by whirlpools. So again, it's not only that the trees are dangerous, but it's a sense that the water itself is not helpful to us, can cause us harm. Here the river was clear, deep green from the reflection of the trees. We really were voyaging up river. So there is a sense of excitement there, isn't there? That exclamation mark helps to highlight that. So although this is very dangerous, I'm starting to think as a character that I get a sense of enjoyment as well. I thought it was on an optical illusion, but the canoe was actually climbing up a volume of water great enough to sustain an almost constant angle of ascent, which means going up even on the stretches of water between the jagged steps of the rapids. So jagged steps, obviously jagged, sharp, dangerous. The rapids obviously is fast flowing water. Supports this idea again as a character I'm thinking this is dangerous, but in some ways also uh, an enjoyable adventure. We stopped by a pile of driftwood to hide a drum of petrol to be retrieved a few days later on the return journey. A monster lizard reared up on its front legs Watch this for a moment with its dinosauric eyes. Again, I could have highlighted that. It's a sense that the animals are almost like prehistoric beasts. Again, and we're worried about dinosaurs as human beings and they might eat us. A brimley kite flying low enough for us to hear the rush of the air through the primary feathers of its wings circled overhead watching us. Its flecked brown belly white in the sun. Then the bird soared away, mewing its shrill call. So again, Bird, dangerous, but the idea of it soaring away suggests a sense of beauty as well. Further up, the rapids became more frequent and more turbulent, and each one 
Heavy waves of water would crash over and into the boat, highlighting again this sense of danger. James, sitting opposite me on the boards in the centre of the canoe and facing upstream, was reading his way through the poems of the 18th century writer Swift, a straw boater on his bald head, his white shirt buttoned at the neck and at the wrist. So we can see I've started to now highlight the next bullet point, which is our relationship with Redmond. But we can see we already get this impression of whilst we're worried about trying to survive, he doesn't seem like that way at all. Some of his poems are pretty feeble, James would mutter, displeased. Quite so, but, uh, James? Yes. Rapid 5, 8, 3, slash 2, green heave, strength 6 out of 10 is approaching. So, I've highlighted that, because it suggests that the character that I'm about to be is concerned about the fact he doesn't seem to be worried at all. With a second or two spare, James would shut his book, mark his place for twig, slip it neatly under the edge of his tarpaulin, sit on it, shut his eyes, get drenched, open his eyes, squeeze the water from his beard with his right hand, retrieve his book and carry on reading. So basically he doesn't seem to be helping at all. He only seems to be uh, caring about himself and his book. Every 450 metres or so, a lesser fish eagle would regard us with its yellow eye, flying off only as we drew almost level, flapping gently ahead of the canoe to the limit of its territory. Could be looking at the environment there, but I haven't done so at this particular point. James, his huge head laid back on a hump of our kit under the tarpaulin, was having one of his five-minute snoozes highlighted. Again, highlights the sense that he's lazy. I know he's lazy, but having one of suggests that this happened numerous times. The vein in his right temple was throbbing, a sure sign that his brain was awash with extra dissolved oxygen and that some piece of programming vital to the production of a future poem was in progress. James, exclamation mark, unhappy, an eye opened. Not really fussed, is he? What is it? Just this. If you do see a log floating up a river, let me know. Crocodiles? Well, not the one that attacks you. Not up here. But an old book I read said we might see freshwater species. The four and a half metre one with the one and a half metre snout and all those teeth. Really, Redmond, said James, raising himself on an elbow, looking about. You're absurd. So, my plan. The environment, inhospitable, dangerous, threatening, challenging, but interesting. You can see for each bullet point I've noted down some brief ideas. Thoughts about the next few days, it continues to be difficult, especially with Rem not really being there. I've got some of my key phrases, I've got some of the punctuation I wish to use, and then some of the things that I get to do to proofread and use different sentence starters. And this is my piece. Sometimes I wonder what I'm doing here. I have yet to decide upon which is worse, Redmond or the environmental dangers that lurk around every twist of this inhospitable landscape. So you can see it's in my own words, I'm being the character. I'm sure that when I get home, because remember this is written as a journal intended to be given to the people of my family. The fact that I'm able to give you this journal to read will be evidence enough that I am alive. However, at this precise moment, the whole jungle seems to be working against us. Trees seem to stand like giant monsters blocking every path in every direction like large gangs of criminals. Other plant life seems to leech off living things like the parasite idea, like some kind of disease, making me wonder whether we will ever reach our goal. It is not only the plants that make our journey almost impossible, the very river that guides our path appears determined to harm us. Every twist of the mighty water appears to hide within it some kind of threatening and aggressive object, such as whirlpools that can pull us under the water, or large boulders which wait with sinister glee to end our lives. So you can see I'm using the information but in my own words, and I need to use as much detail as possible to get those 15 marks and sound up like the character all the way through. You would think that with all this impenetrable danger, the last thing which should concern me is my travelling partner, Redmond, wouldn't you? Well, family, because I'm writing to the family, so my audience is clear in my mind. You are very much wrong. He appears to have a rather lackadaisical, which means lazy approach to any form of danger which signals potential death. He often only doing enough at the last minute to protect his book and his beard before going back to another one of his many short naps. In one sense, the trust he places in me is pleasing, although a little help every now and again would make me feel far happier. Now, this isn't in the text, so what I'm having to do is to understand how the character thinks and feels and use that information. That ability to show I understand how the characters would feel is part of that 15 marks. His laziness isn't even the worst part. It is his helpful bits of information that do nothing but make him seem ridiculous, leaving me not only angry, but somewhat worried about what could actually be lurking around the next bend. 
It would be great to have him do more than just sleep, read and occasionally scare me of his limited lack of knowledge that he may have discovered in some book by an author who has never even been to this place. However, despite all of this, one cannot help but feel excited by a great sense of adventure that awaits us. So now on the third bullet point, there's no information really in the text about the next few days. We have to use the information that's from the text and then we think, right, well how would this character feel in the next few days? The fabulous wildlife which soars over our heads daily is a constant reminder of the beauty that can also be found here. Furthermore, whilst the river has a power to take our lives from us at any moment, its strength and ability to seem to move uphill can only impress. Whilst I at least am very much aware that many dangers lie ahead of us, again, still look at the third bullet point, I am looking forward to discovering new things and facing new challenges, even if Redmond is only bothered about his reading. I look forward to noting down more about our grand adventure and look forward to once again being embraced by you, my loving family. Now again, that'll be about a side and a side and a half. You notice I've structured it in the same order as the bullet points, so that's a really good way to help you order your work. Doing this, plenty of detail from the original text, 15 marks, I sound like I'm the character, that's how I get my 15 marks. Five marks for writing, have I used lots of complex vocabulary, have I used different sentence types, have I done all the things I need to do to get A and A star? Yes is the answer. So. If you do all those things, you're guaranteed to get full marks for this particular question in the exam. So thank you. There's a link to look at the past papers as well. But remember, revise the method, practice doing the exam time, and the content that you need is to carefully read through the texts. Okay, so thank you. Good luck with your revision, and well done.